We had a selected top before that uh, I cannot continue because somehow there are some technical issues. We are going to start with a regular event in our regular practices pregnancy today. What is pregnancy? Is a gestation which occurs as fertilization of ovum by a sperm when it is released from the ovary during ovulation. We know everybody. And about the secondary amenorrhea is a state of pregnancy unless proved otherwise. The primary amenorrhea is a different entity to be discussed separately. If you have any question, if you, there is any problem, please share me in Messenger and here. Uh, so we are going to talk about primary amenorrhea and the gestation, issue of gestation. Okay, so. Uh, pregnancy is a state of fertilization of ovum by a sperm when it is released from the ovary during ovulation. And what is the role of ultrasonogram in first trimester? Is there any utility of first trimester ultrasound? Yes, we have got definite purpose of first trimester ultrasound. First is the confirmation of pregnancy and its viability. Whether the patient, whether the uh, missed period experienced by a patient is going to have a pregnancy or not is a very critical issue in the total human life of a woman. So that we need to confirm the pregnancy and next on its viability and the exact dating of pregnancy and EDT thereby. Whenever you get a confirmation of pregnancy and its viability, it is ultimately going to give you an exact dating and EDD and the exact location of the gestational implantation. And it may be normal in children pregnancy and it would be an ectopic pregnancy, would be a heterotopic pregnancy. And what is normal utopic pregnancy that is called utopic pregnancy. The ectopic pregnancy is an important issue, it's an important topic. You need to rule out that whether the, the pregnancy is running in the, in the utero or outside. And the heterotopic pregnancy is a state where there is a simultaneous in, in utero pregnancy and associated ectopic pregnancy outside the uterus. So you need to uh, exactly what is happening after a missed period of a woman, the critical questions comes sudden, all on a sudden to the scenario that you have to answer whether she's a pregnancy she has got or not, whether this pregnancy will be viable or not. And if it is viable, then what is the uh, exactly happening the in utero pregnancy or it is outside the uterus or if or there is heterotopic pregnancy inside and outside the uterus this is the common indications in first trimester other issues are not of your job that is a specialist uh, topic to be discussed in higher educations and what is a normal intra pregnancy? You are going to answer if you are a clinician or a sonologist or a radiologist. You have to answer some part of a missed period of pregnancy in first trimester. You see, there is a gestational sac. This is a bulky uterus. Uh, uterus which has got more volume than normal. There is a gestational sac inside, and you see there is a measurement caliber seen on both sides of, of an embryo. So what is here? You see a fetus present, and it is being measured here, a small yolk sac, you know, and the placental tissue is getting to be formed 
along the anterior wall of the uterus. And this is not very difficult if you want to uh, explain, you see clearly and it will answer its own self by this photograph. And the initial ultrasonographic findings is not really a trans abdominal ultrasound. It is a transvaginal ultrasound that gives you a real picture of the gestation state. It can detect the fetal pole by five and a half weeks, where the trans abdominal ultrasound can predict the fetal viability by six and a half weeks. So there is a lag time between the trans abdominal ultrasound and uh, transvaginal ultrasound you know, seen here. So uh, if you want to answer the woman having missed period one week before is relaxing for the patient and the clinician also. The lag between LMP and five to six and a half weeks from LMP, a missed period really, really is about one and a half months. The anxiety is resolved by the urine for PT will give a time-oriented relaxation. That is the first thing you can go for and a transvaginal ultrasound will reveal a sentinel artery to an early gestational sac and a forming gestation with a yolk sac. So this is uh, the thing you can go for that initially we'll have a pregnancy test of, uh, of urine and the transvaginal ultrasound. It may only give you an extra artery, uh, dilated artery to supply a growing gestational sac uh, and it may have a yolk sac by five weeks. The all answer to a successful conception study is a viable fetal pole in the utero. A small pole with a moving cardiac activity can see. The early pregnancy ultrasound findings really we are going to pay you. The early trimester sonographic findings will give you 0 to 4.3 weeks, no sonographic findings really. So four weeks, the missed period, and another three days, no sonographic findings. Only a sentinel artery could be detected in TBS. Only a sentinel artery. And four weeks, three days to five weeks, you will may have a small decisional sac, a double decidual sign, an intradudinal sac, intradecidual sign. At five weeks plus, you will get a small vesicle structure called yolk sac. And at five and a half weeks, we are going to have a small beating fetal pole finally confirms and alive intrauterine pregnancy. So the time is here. He will not have anything up to four, uh, four weeks or three days. Uh, after four weeks and three days to five weeks, a small gestational sac, double decibel sign, intradural sign. And five weeks, you will get to yolk sac in the gestational sac. And five and a half weeks, half weeks, and two years, you will get a live intrauterine pregnancy. And this is a small gestational sac. You can have it just a drop of fluid inside the uterine cavity and the, and the topography tissue around. The double decibel sign is said to be very important to be discussed here. This is a reliable sign to confirm early gestation, even when the yolk sac is still not seen. You are not having a fetal pole, you are not having a yolk sac, but if you get double decibel sign, gestational sac, here it is outlined by an echogenic ring of decidua parietalis and decidua capsularis. The decidua capsularis is an inner echogenic wall covering an adherent to hypopanic gestational sac rib. And the decidua parietalis is the outer lining covering the uterine cavity, the aspect of the gestational sac and uterus. 
you see this is decidual parietalis is outside lining the atrium cavity and the part here the gestational sac is this is the gestational sac and the lining this is called decidua capsularis what there is something uh, important terminology you must be oriented that for a pseudo gestational sac the pseudo gestational sac is really lacking the double decidual side there is fluid collection in the trend cavity without having a dual layer and that is not very defined here it is an irregular outline no distension inside so this is a single lining epithelial lining uh, space of fluid that is called gestational pseudo gestational sac is single gestural ring or hypoechoic area in the atrial cavity and it is formed from the decidual past and fluid in the atrial cavity this finding is seen in the ectopic pregnancy so the pseudo gestational sac is found we are uh, trying to find it in ectopic pregnancy. And at one end, there is um, gestational sac, there is appearance of the fetal pole, and there is a live fetal pole. And the other, other part of the gestation ends with a blighter over. The blighted ovum is uh, gestational sac size more than 25 millimeter without any leading fetal pool is diagnosed as blighted ovum. Gestational sac more than 25 millimeter dimension without any fetal leading fetal pool is blighted ovum. And this is a blighted ovum. It has got a decidual capsularis and the, this is decidual parietalis but inside there is no fetal pole uh, this is called the blighted ova and here successful twin here is lying you see uh, this is uh, amniotic cavities two in number and uh, this is called a delta sign there is penetration of the placental tissue within the separating membrane between the fetus this is called the delta sign it gives you the impression of impression of of the two placental tissues serving two amniotic cavities and two fetal poles. So this is uh, the part of pregnancy we are discussing here. If you have got energy, we can go to the other part of pregnancy. Should I go for? Hello, Tarek. So the other thing is intradecidual sac sign and early intraven pregnancy, a hypoechogenic ring like structure is seen within thickened nicogenic decidual reaction of emulsion. Hypoepigenic sac, this is the example here. You see, just only a drop of water-like area is seen within the decidual reaction. Thickened nicogenic decidual reaction of the emulsion. And the double blade sign is the amniotic cavity and the Early intrauterine gestational sac, there is presence of yolk sac and amniotic sac. Yolk sac and amniotic sac. Yolk sac and amniotic sac. And the fetus is seen in between the two. And we were talking about the glycerobum. Again, we are here. The failed pregnancy when the CRL is more than seven millimeter and no embryonic activity, 
is defined as missed miscarriage and then the MST more than 25 millimeter no yolk cell is called missed intercept miscarriage. The follow-up scan you need to go, you need to perform after seven days. Sometimes it is it is just 10 days. So this is all about our today's presentation. The later on we will talk about more and other things.